And hello, and welcome to Band of Badgers. I'm Dave, your host for this evening, and this is the Great British Brush Off. Uh, we hope you're well. This is season three, the first episode of season three. We're, we're back. I never thought we'd make three seasons, but here we are. Um, joining me around the paint pot, as always, is Steve and Joe. How are you doing, guys? Good, mate. Thank you. I'm good. It's good. A little bit tired. But yeah, a little bit tired. <laughs> we've, we've just got back from, uh, well, it's a three-day uh, three gaming convention um, here in the UK. A little bit tired, don't spent a lot of money, bit hoarse, been talking to lots and lots of people. Um, but we'll, 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 we'll carry on, at least we're doing some nice relaxing stuff. But if I do fall asleep, I apologise. Um, welcome, and also returning, our returning superstar artist, Leia Robertson, how are you? Hello, I'm <laughs> doing pretty awesome. Uh, I seem to be more awake than anybody else, so yep. I'll bring the energy. <laughs> that, that's fine. It's Monday afternoon for you. It's Monday evening for us. Um, we'll, we'll see how we we'll see how we get on. Um, but basically, <laughs> we are going to be painting. Uh, you won't be able to see that. We're going to be painting these most excellent. Uh, these are the female human alchemist, part of the Deep Cuts series from WizKids for Pathfinder Battles. They are absolutely gorgeous. Obviously, as always, you get two in a pack. Um, you'll see some of the stuff that's going on. We've got a new kind of setup you'll see on the on the on your right hand side of the screen. Various minis from Wave 15 is coming up, and these are all the ones that we'll be painting. So do do keep an eye out for that. And also links in live chat that Steve will throw up or Joe will throw up. Um, if you have any questions, let us know. Um, ask a question at any time. Ask Leia. Tips, help, advice, ways to paint. Just keep on asking and we'll get the information. But for the next yeah. hour and a half to two hours, we will be painting this thing. So we're going we're gonna to crack that open in a second. Thank you, as always, to WizKids. Thank you to Vallejo. Uh, but most of all, thank you to you for watching. Uh, it's a pleasure to actually to, to have you join us to do that. Um, now, if you don't already know Band of Badgers, we are here and we support writers, artists, designers, and creators um, across all of our shows and across the entire world. Whether it's flat or round, I don't care. We'll still talk to you. And we're happy to kind of get your involvement and we will signal boost you um, yeah, to head on back. Uh, all you got to do is get in touch and you can find all of our content on our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash band of badgers. So uh, check that out as well, please. Any subscriptions you can do are, are most warmly welcomed. Um, but if you would like to support us in return, you can in all the usual places. What have we got? We've got Twitch subs, Patreon, we've got uh, merch, we've got mugs and T-shirts and hoodies and all kinds of stuff. Um, we even have an Amazon wish list. Um, we've just come back from a convention, so we probably don't need anything right now. I spent a lot of money. I spent too much money. Um, but it's what Christmas is coming. Winter is here. Well, not here. We're in the middle of summer. Winter's coming. <laughs> but anyway, let's crack on. Enough of that crap. <laughs> we will need to paint some stuff. We're not here to listen to you talk. No, exactly. We want to paint. <laughs> we want to paint shit and and talk about stuff. And, Did and, uh, we need to we need to respond to Jen's question before we start. Did we get the pizza from beer? Yes, we got the pizza from beer. We did get pizza from beer. Thank you, Jen. For counts. <laughs> yeah, yes, it, it, is. Was, it was a very nice pizza. I, I had a uh, barbecue burnt ends pizza. Mm, look. Yeah, it was lovely. I had the Polo Ad Astra. Very, very nice. Got it, breakfast starters. And then a few beers. So we needed we needed the beers, but we are a little bit tired. Not caused by a beer, just caused by <laughs> walking around a huge that... convention center. Oh yeah, that like post con exhaustion. Yeah, that that is that is universal speak right there. <laughs> yeah, I'm mean, a little bit out of practice uh, again. For those of you who don't know, I used to own a comic shop, so we used to do comic comic shows, conventions. You spend hours and hours and hours and days on your feet talking to every single customer that comes to your, your booth. And um, it was nice to go back to that environment, but I am exhausted. Yep. <laughs> a, a few years out. Well, actually, it's just by being in lockdown for a year and a half, just by being out of practice. <laughs> like... that, that took a lot of effort. Yeah, just just walking around, being out of practice. <laughs> <laughs> It was like dealing with people. Just, just being outside. <laughs> yeah. Being outside, fresh air, being, being among others. Um, right, so let's switch cameras. 
let's crack open the minis. Ooh. Joe's already got a head start, I saw. Um, yeah, let's... Unless a yellow card offence in it. <laughs> <laughs> it might well be. I wanted to put it on my um, my holder. Yeah. Oh, you've gone all fuzzy, Joe. Uh, it's because I've still got the um, blurred background on. <laughs> it's just like <laughs> just a head floating. Yeah. <laughs> There we go. Excuse the noises, but we're going to crack these open. Oh, come on. Ditched these out. Here we go. Boom, boom, boom. I need, I need, oh, Try yeah. to keep my, my back intact. I keep these, strangely enough. I've been keeping them as well. I don't know I, why. I keep them for, like... So if somebody's like, have you ever painted this thing? And I might not like have the miniatures anymore. I can be like, look through That's a good idea. packages. Yeah. But basically at this point, it's like, yes. Yes, yeah. it exists. I've painted it. <laughs> <laughs> Is how it works now. Right, um, we go. Totally blanked out on what to do with this other miniature. There we go. See if you can, if everyone can see that. Very highly detailed mini. It is um, a highly detailed mini. Very good. So, um, uh, for those of you who have who have seen the brush off seasons before, um, uh, Leia, before we went on, we were, went on air, set us a new challenge. So basically, we've been doing this for a while, so we can't really call ourselves amateurs anymore, um, or at least <laughs> me. I, I am still amateur. But we've moved from amateur to low skill. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> like low cost labor. Um, and there's a lot of stuff that um, that we can do now as we're getting used to. But Leia said, right, go off script. Now I, I'm I'm one for I always paint the first mini in the original colours so I know what I'm doing. And then I'm more comfortable about going off script. So I'm gonna stay a bit of a purist in that sense. But guys, what what's your plans? And Leia, um, what what are you gonna do? I'm, I'm um, going off script. I what the heck? There's that looks like an airbrush setup. Steve has a cardboard <laughs> box in front of his face. Uh, oh I'm, man! I'm going invisible, and yes, I am airbrushing. So so here's the thing, and so a little bit of of background on this. I feel like every time I've been on brush off, and I have said, here are the colors that we're gonna use for this uh, for the show. Joe completely ignores me. Yep. <laughs> so I've decided, so I don't have to do a bunch of work, and also because I forgot. Um, I was like, do whatever you want. No one listens to me anyway. <laughs> so that's uh, that's what that's where I'm at with this. That, that sounds about right. That's fine. As, as far as what I'm going to be painting, um, I've just laid out a bunch of paints and uh, I'm, I'm going to paint and just see where it goes from there. Um, I'm, I'm really just, I've set out a bunch of colors for myself that I might want. And uh, I'm just going to see where my little heart takes me. But I'm, I'm starting in my usual face first eyes first <laughs> i want to see see how well you guys did throughout season two <laughs> when i when i started when i kicked off season one helping you guys with eyes and then we did eyes again so i'm being asked what in chat what i'm putting on the base uh it's a technical paint and it basically makes it look like sandy mud sort of stuff is that that's not the one that's gonna crack, right? That's the no uh, the sand. Armageddon, Armageddon dust, so it's got like bits of grit in it and stuff. Gotcha. Yeah. I've got the mud like that. I love. Yeah, the, I've got the cracked one as well. Um, I've actually, what is it? On um, this one right here, this one that we were talking about before the show a little bit. Well, it might dry. My eyes dry. I use that a bit here on these boots. Mhm. Mm and put some of the the mud on there, so I've got some cool mud on the bottom of this. That's nice. I almost called it a miniature. Yeah. It's not a miniature. It's as big as my face. A mass massivature. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's really a figure. <laughs> I 
Um, let's see. Will there be a list of colors after the show? Um, I'm gonna go through as I pick up colors. I will I will talk about what colors that I've used. But if it's um, I will make a list for myself and we'll we'll post that maybe on my Twitter, um, for after the show, so everybody knows what we're we're talking yeah. about. But I will I will also be going through and talking about what colors I choose as I as I paint. A bigature, yes. It's all good. It's all good. Newbies, newbies, welcome. Newbies, welcome. Yep. Ruby, uh, doing some sky blue for my eyes. I want some nice bright blue eyes. So, any, is anybody using any kind of inspiration for their miniature? I guess I'm just kind of giving you guys some free range as far as what you'd like to do. Does anybody? I know, Dave. You mentioned that you're gonna you're gonna just use the the back of the box. I'm I'm gonna try to keep it to match that as as possible based on the colors that I have available. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna see if I can match it. There, there's things interesting things like on this particular mini. Uh, this is the the human alchemist, which means um, she makes <laughs> liquid explosives. And this particular mini has quite a nasty facial scar on one side of her face. And I, I'm kind of like how, I wonder how I'm going to be able to pick that pick that out. So I'm I interested actually, to see that. I don't know if I can see that on my miniature. I'm like looking real hard at this. If you look at the, um, I can see. the blown up piece oh. of artwork, you so, can, she's um, got quite a scar. I have, so this is probably a burn scar. Yeah. So with burn scars, they're a little bit more on the pinky side. Do you have a, a flesh tone that you're going to be using? I've got a, yeah, I've kind of, I thought I might cheat and use a very pale flesh tone for her normal skin and okay. then use a pink take, for the take scar. Take a little bit of a red, yeah, or like a pink and put it in the scar. Um, so I didn't think about that and I didn't grab any colors. So I'm going to have to snag a red real quick. <laughs> This is a bonus of my painting stuff just being right behind me. <laughs> um, to answer Someone's your question, really did the dragon spear... I think it's Joe. <laughs> I think it's Sorry, what was that? I, think, Somebody. I was going to say, Joe is Joe's doing the uh, the Darth Vader. Oh, He's really yeah. into, into his... Uh, <laughs> yeah, probably am. I was wondering what was sounding like Darth Vader over there. Yeah. It's probably me, yeah. <laughs> he starts concentrating. To answer your question, Dragon Spear, um, I, I know I will at least be using a wash because I like nice, uh, what's the word, contrasty mm -hmm. miniatures. Yeah, it always, it always looks better once you do a wash on something. I'm just using my my army painter psycho to paint the tiniest lines in existence which are the eyes that's some some base stuff going on that's fine don't focus well whatever fine <laughs> me and this camera we got quite the love-hate relationship going on <laughs> Actually, uh, I've noticed we've got Baron and Dragon's Fire watching. I'm going to ask a little favor of you two because I'm going to steal one of Joe's painting things that he does on his stream, which is a little bit of background music. So let me know if it's too quiet or too <clears throat> loud. I'm going to turn this on if it works. Badoom. Uh, oh, we do that on our our Wednesday stream. Uh, we yep. we uh, our our painting stream. We get music going on in the background. Sadly, we won't yeah. be able to hear it, but but they will. Yeah. So it, just let us know if it's too loud. Yeah, you need it. You actually need it reasonably quiet. I know it sounds really weird, but 
it comes over him. It's too quiet, or it's nice and quiet, Dragon's Fire? Is it just the right chill level? Uh, uh, it's pretty quiet, very quiet. Joe also has the game, which is hilarious. Yeah, I, I can't do that on the Badger stream, so I'm not the... Uh... I'm not the owner. Oh, you mean the, uh, the little game that goes across the bottom? Yeah. Someone's got their, their music, their own music playing in the background. Uh, it's my daughter. She's just started watching something on her iPad before she was playing a game that was quiet. So I might just tell her to go get headphones on. Two seconds. <laughs> Cool. As long as you can hear the music in the in the background, audience, and it's not too not too loud for you, then that is cool. I'm just basically doing a base coat of one brown color. Please just don't need to jump that. Daughter's about to go through the floor. I love I love when eyes turn out just the way you want them. <laughs> first round. All right. Mm -hmm. Goodness. You okay? Yeah, just throwing my paint into my own lap. Oh no! <laughs> That's fine. I just pole vaulted my paintbrush into my white shirt. There we go. Uh, don't don't uh, wear white when you paint. For my skin tone, I'm going to be using um, Reaper's Fair Skin uh, shade from their Master Series paint. This is their their regular fair skin. I don't need my tiniest brush in the entire world yet. Or anymore. <laughs> so Steve, now that you're not airbrushing anymore, I, I had posed a question to Joe and Dave, um, but do you ha have any kind of inspiration that you're taking for your alchemist? Or are you um, just kind of doing whatever? Weird, weirdly, no, for a change. Normally, I, I do have a little bit of inspiration, uh, mm -hmm. but I don't this time. So, no. Um, the What I was doing was spray painting it all white. And uses that using that as a base coat, and I wanted to try and muddy up the the white tunic, do some um, yeah mud around the bottom, try and do some soot marks or something like that. Just pick out the browns for the bandolier belts. Try and do some wet blending mm -hmm. uh, with some highlighting rather than dry brushing and then try and do a glaze on the white exposed parts of the tunic uh, to reflect the colour coming out of the bottles. So I was right going to on. go one green and one blue and so put a little bit of green glaze down one side, a little bit of blue glaze down the other. We'll, we'll see right it and whether I run out of time or not. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, I mean, you're not taking inspiration from anything but man, does it sound like you have a plan. <laughs> I have a plan. And yeah. Steve, Steve is, always has a plan. Yes, I do. <laughs> it could I be worse. Put the uh, the tech helmet on. Mm -hmm. 
Now this, I'm using the uh, the mini that I'm doing is the one with the the arms spread open wide. I think oh. that's the one that we're all doing. Yeah. Yeah. She has a nice big open collar. I'm trying to get down between the collar and the neck. I'm gonna have to use a different brush, I think. I have to use a smaller brush. do her coat green i don't have the color green i i set out like six greens and i'm not going to use any of them <laughs> like a muddy like a deep deep green so i'm going to be using some vallejo's intermittent green and I'm going to be mixing that with some Rhinox Hide, so a super, super dark brown that I don't have a Vallejo version of. <laughs> Do you find that you tend to mix mix your paints anyway to make your own um, you know, shade? Or do you prefer to go, that's in a bottle, or have it? No, I, I tend to be a, a paint mixer. Um, I, I will... I have a very hard time finding the exact color uh, in a bottle that I really enjoy. Mm -hmm. um, it is the very rare case that that, that is the uh, that, that is indeed the case. Um, I've, I've especially found that out when doing the Good Morning RPG with us, with the party, is like, we'll be talking about colors. I'm like, oh yeah, that's like a blue green, or it's like a, you know, take this color and add a yeah. little bit of this and you'll get that color. And then he'll just be like, oh, you mean like this color that comes in this bottle? Yeah. Like, I, I guess if you want to use <laughs> the color out of a bottle. There we go. Like a nice, nice dark olive green. I've also found when you when you do more paint mixing opposed to using paints out of the bottles, you get more different looking miniatures. When I first started painting, I didn't mix my paints as often, mm -hmm. and I felt like every every character that I did looked very similar to other characters I had already painted. Yeah. Then you will go to the same because you have some favorite colors. Uh... Yeah, so out of the sets you get, did you have a, a series of favorite colors that were pre-mixed ones and you tended to gravitate towards those? Um, I buy Vallejo's chocolate brown in like sets of four <laughs> because I tend to go with it so often because it does complement a lot of the stuff that I'm working with. Yeah. Um, in fact, I've got it sitting out over here because I think I'm going to be doing the bandoliers and whatnot in that like nice chocolatey brown mm -hmm. yeah um there's also um like for instance uh i think reaper reaper paints makes a really cool uh i think they call it runic purple which is like a purple with like some pinky undertones which is really cool for um i tend to use it for sorceresses and bards because i feel like it's like the perfect color for that the type of clothing they wear i guess but yeah, I do. I do tend to have favorite colors, but they are the more bizarre 
Or some of them are bizarre, I suppose. I guess chocolate brown is not all that bizarre. <laughs> Oh, I have made a fatal flaw, though. I've painted the coat so dark that I can now no longer see any of the straps. <laughs> Look at that, we've hit the quiet moment already. Yep, it's well, everybody's it concentrating. It. Lots of well, there is as we said when we started this. This miniature is is very detailed, so it, I feel like everybody is very much concentrating on those tiny little details. That just looks like gray. <laughs> Concentration level three out of four. Yeah. <laughs> I think it also doesn't help that these guys are exhausted and I've had like six cups of coffee today. So <laughs> and I also haven't like gone through the entire day as they are. I'm. I am like you guys on my Wednesday night painting show where I'm just like, I've had the entire day to do mm -hmm. things and now I'm exhausted. <laughs> so we mentioned... Um... We were, we were talking both off, off air and, and slightly a little bit at the start. Warhammer is making a big push at, at the moment. All new releases. Um, what does everybody think about those? Orcs is. Orcs is. Um, I have some complicated feelings about Warhammer right now. Um. Is that as a painter or as a fan? Um, well, I'm not really a fan of Warhammer. Um, I kind of paint them just because I tend to like some of the looks of their miniatures. That you you would be very hard pressed to find um, anything very much like the Sisters of Battle, which is really what I enjoy painting. Mm -hmm. uh, it's you'd be very hard pressed to find that kind of armor in any kind of other uh, model series. However, there is some some you know stuff going on in their community that is not things that I could quite get behind. Yeah. Uh, I played against Sisters of Battle Army this weekend and got absolutely owned. <laughs> yep. Well, that's because they've got they've got those nundums now. Yeah. A, nu a what? A nundum. What's it? A Gundam. Gundam. Is that yeah. like nunchuckers? They look, or? No. they look like they look like Gundams. They look All like right. Gundam suits. But Nundams. But, but, but they've got nuns in. But they've got nuns in them, so they're Nundams. Nundams. It just makes loads of sense. It just sounds like um, was it uh, night in the, night in the museum? Dum dum. It sounds like num num. Oh, yeah. I think he says dum 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 like, like gum gum. <laughs> dum dum. Like, like, look at these models though. I'm just gonna focus. Oh, that's the orc. The orc sort yeah. of motorbike. Yeah, there's a squeak with a rear tire. It's a beast. It's had a rear tire stuck in it. Oh right, so it's an actual living animal with a yeah, that, a all wheel shot on its bum, right? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, they're really good. You got chap, haven't I? Ah! I jinxed myself with these eyes. 
did really well laying them on, but now when I try to get skin tone around them, they keep leaking into the eyes. Oh, uh, yeah. Let's all let that dry. Stop fussing at it. I am good, Hunter. Thank you for asking. How are you guys doing? I think it's Chav. Hunter wants to know. You guys are all tired, right? <laughs> all good, man. All good. It's been, it's been a long silence. weekend, Chav. It's been a long, long weekend. Long journey. Staying in a hotel. <laughs> But oh no! Talking to a lot of people. Ah oh, crap! Oh, <laughs> what'd you drop? I didn't drop anything. I was trying to squeeze a little bit of this flat earth onto my palate, and and that yeah, happened. A lot in. <laughs> it exploded, and yeah. now it's 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 become one with the rest of my paint. I I had that with um. What did I have it with? Like a glaze medium. I squeezed mm -hmm. it and the whole top of the thing came off. Oh. And literally flooded my whole wet palette. Ah crap. Everything's gonna be kinda brown now. I think I've got like jungle alchemist. Thing going on here. It's like this green reminds me of like jungle green. How you doing, Steve? You've gone all quiet. Have we lost you? We've lost you in mute and Robocop land. I see he's, he's back into Robocop. Yeah. <laughs> I am trying to remember to paint on stream so you can see what I'm doing. <laughs> Steve's running into his Nundum. <laughs> he's all hooked, hooked in. To the matrix, look in. I am. Mm. Actually, I don't think I've painted since our last tap call we did. Uh, I've painted a lot of um, terrain since we was on with James when we did the weathering, but I haven't painted a mini. So I was, I was painting all that dungeons and lasers stuff um, for Starfinder. But yeah, I'm, I'm the same. I've not painted a mini since we was on with James. I've I've almost finished my two thousand point army. I've painted a lot of things. <laughs> uh, I I get that. I get that though, Steve. I haven't I haven't painted anything this small in quite a while. I've been working on this huge 300 millimeter uh, figure the last couple of uh, weeks. Lots of detailed filigree and stuff like that, but nothing like this small. I find it's difficult to go back to the, the small sizes when you've been doing something larger. Yeah, for sure. Although I, I cheated, I cheated my way mostly through the the larger figurine. As a lot of that was like airbrush work. Right. Yeah. You hear that, Steve? Cheated, airbrush. <laughs> I literally painted it white. <laughs> <laughs> work smarter, not harder. It's, it's not like I, uh, I cracked out the shifter paints or anything. <laughs> yeah, seriously. <laughs> uh, 
and it um, and it blocked. So uh, that's, that's a problem for when you finish streaming. Unblock it. So I didn't quite put as much white down as I wanted to. I think my green is too dark. Wow. Somebody is holding Somebody's... their breath. Yeah. Really well... Intensely. <laughs> Steve was just like. I'd just like to remind you guys that even though you haven't painted in a while, please breathe. Yeah. Please. <laughs> the last thing we need is somebody like passing out. That that, that was um when when we very first started the brush off, uh, our very first guest was uh, V Muse, and she was yeah. telling us stories where she used to paint, um, you know, do classes and people would. would, would whether it's conventions or whatever, but people, you know, uh, sit around a table with her and she's instructing them or what to do. And every now and then you just hear, <sighs> as big, <laughs> because people had forgot to breathe. <laughs> and then it's yeah. like, <gasps> got to take a deep breath. And you think, no, nope, just, just breathe. It's just, it doesn't, you know, it doesn't have to be perfect. Who is perfect? We've actually had to, on, on the, um, on our other, the, the painting stream that I do regularly is um, we've actually had to do when people spend channel points, there is a channel point spend that you can just tell us to breathe. To breathe. <laughs> we'll forget all the time. <clears throat> Especially, what well, I think Matt was painting a, a, a like Tau Queen from, from Warhammer last week, which is a lot of white. So anybody mm -hmm. here who knows uh, anything about paint and white, <laughs> don't do it. Don't do it. It was great. We were on stream for like five minutes, and he's like, "I already painted brown all over this white boot," and I was like, yeah. "Don't paint with white." <laughs> I think it is, um, it's I'm gonna say, you, you were on for this. I painted that shield white, and I was just sitting there like, oh, "Why did I do this to myself?" Yep. <laughs> yeah, I remember that. <laughs> And I was like, you're brave. You're so brave. It's like, even that tiny shield, you're like, oh, God's sake. <laughs> I'm, I'm kicking myself real hard because the, uh, the large, the large figure that I'm supposed to be painting, um, I'm supposed to do a family crest on it. Mm -hmm. Um, and it's got a white background and I'm just putting it off every mm -hmm. single day. Cause I just don't, I don't want to paint white. I just don't want to. And then, like, if I mess up, like, it's over. Yeah, I think, like, starting off on, like, a grey or something like that, and then working up to a white is generally a bit better, but even so, it's still, just white paint's just really chalky. It's, it's not even that it's chalky, it's just, it's thin, and it yeah. never wants to go on correctly, and it's, and because it's thin, if you mess it up, and you've got to reap paint the white over anything it takes it you like just, a million times to do it and then it just yeah. builds up and builds up and builds up you can see all the messing up yeah. and it's just can you tell i don't like white <laughs> oh that's so much better that green looks so much nicer oh yeah that's nice yeah. i've gone with a blue but where is it but i'm uh probably gonna do a wash and then go purple Come on, focus, focus, focus. Focus, focus, focus. If I get my oh hands my out of the way. Nope. 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 <laughs> this camera just hates me. I think you've got one of those razors as well, right? No, I've got the I've got a um, Logitech. Oh, okay. Funny thing is, I've got a Logitech like streaming camera, but it's like uh, focusing. No thanks. <laughs> You're funny. Excuse <gasps> me. 
No excuse for you. Hmm? What? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, I told you guys just to just build with beans. <clears throat> Do, 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 do. There's um, here's a question. So, the artwork, like we, because we've got copies of um, the artwork from the the back of the the packaging. Mm -hmm. The bottom of her coat, um, or the 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 outfit. There is this kind of like an archway pattern. Mm -hmm. How would you get, how would you paint that? It, it is actually part of the model. So is that just something you hope that a wash is gonna feel? Or is there any other way to bring that out? So, it actually, I can see it in the model. Mm. It's just it, about it's there. Just, it is so very, very light. Um, you can either hope that a combination of wash and dry brush will bring it out mm -hmm. or with something like this I actually might go back with um, Some like gold or something like that and do the little outlines. Okay. Yeah uh, But That's that's totally up to you if you want to do all of that that work I think What I would end up doing is I would paint that gold on there probably in a super broad band um like a little bit of watered down gold and then repainted my green in to make yeah. a little I'm gonna I'm, I'm gonna do it I'll show you <laughs> <laughs> words are super hard so I'm just gonna do it just do it I'm gonna do that thing that everybody hates I'm gonna put metallic on my wet palette uh -oh. <laughs> I do all the time as well <laughs> but y'all can fight me Why don't you know you're not supposed to put metallic on your wet palette? Yeah. I do things I'm not supposed to do all the time. <laughs> breaking the law, breaking the law, breaking the law, breaking the law. Man, Dave, you're gonna get me to obsess about whether or not this line is right. Yeah, tactical. I was just gonna leave it go, but now, now it's now there. I do something. See, now, now it's, it's there. there. Mm -hmm. Every time you look at it, you'd be like, "That's the one that got away." So you're gonna deal with it. It's like, damn it, Dave. Yep. Why'd you make me see that? <laughs> I was so content in not seeing it. I'm trying to work out what else she's got on her belt. She's, it looks like grenades. And then there's this stick thing. And I wonder if the stick is mm, a type of grenade or something. Scroll? Could be a scroll. I thought it was a scroll tube, yeah. Wrapped tube. Yeah, I'm gonna concur with that. It looks like a scroll tube. Although well, you could paint it as a stick of dynamite, that might be quite fun. There you go, boom stick. Boom. Voila. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, getting into the details now. Ooh. So, Dave, if you can see, I've I've painted in. So, what I've decided is I'm gonna paint oh, in the nice. gold. Yeah. Once once this is dry, I'm gonna go through with my green, and I'm gonna pick out those little. Yeah. Use. 
That's nice. Let's try this one, I think. I think I need one of those psycho brushes because there's also uh, like belt buckles on this on this model. I don't think I'm going to be able to. Ten out of ten would definitely recommend. One, two, three, four, five. Also, I just enjoy telling people that I paint with a psycho. Yep. <laughs> and they're like Matt Brown. No. putting off doing the sleeves because I just really don't want to paint this light color on there. The sleeves, I, I was brave and just went went for it. <laughs> right, I, I think I'm going to do like a bone white. Let's try some Get ah. dark brown in there. I am just being the queen of too much paint on my palette. All right, Dave, remind me the next time I come on not to pick a super challenging mini like this again. Well, yeah, uh, the I think, silence is deafening. You, I think you were, <laughs> I think I offered you the first, the first of the bunch and you saw this and went, I want that one. Uh, um, no, actually, well, I You wanted actually, the wings, I wanted, that's it. I wanted the Deva. Yeah. Um, and when you responded to me like, oh yeah, somebody already took that. And I was like, no. Yeah. No, you missed out by minutes on that one. Ah. Uh. But yeah, we're doing for the, for the, I don't know if we've done. We've never done a monster before, have we? On, on brush off, but we're actually going to be doing two monsters. No, you guys did elementals in. Yeah. Was it? I think it was the second season, or maybe it was the first season. I I don't class them as monsters because they're just simple, simple, simple colors. Because I've come so far since since doing <laughs> doing. I hate those, to break say. it to you, Dave, but <laughs> elementals are monsters. They are in the monster manual. They're, they're, it they makes are. the monsters. They are, but. <laughs> They're cute. Not to get technical. Cute. Wizards, wizards can summon them. The, the 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 baddies we or the monsters, proper monsters we have, uh, and again, they've been coming up on our screen. There's one on there right now. We have the brain collector, which is going to be a lot of fun. And these are big. These are large miniatures, so they're slightly. Well, hopefully, slightly easier to paint. I'm not sure yet. We'll find out when we get there. Well, yeah. Um, and the giant centipede is the other one. Yeah, elementals can be uh, friendly and on your side, but uh, if you lose concentration, they just go on a rampage and start attacking anyone. Yep. So. 
There's a... Don't lose concentration. Especially in Joe's game. Yep, it happened. Chris the other, the other week did, did exactly that thing. And then the Earth Elemental was just running Rampage. Why, why did my mind go immediately to cork summon in an elemental? <laughs> yeah. I know that isn't the thing. <laughs> <laughs> no, he was playing a um, sorcerer in my home, like, friend game. Right. So, so Joe, are you, are you ready to announce, to talk about what your next D&D project uh, might be? I don't know yet if uh, okay. we're going to announce it in on Saturday we'll do the rap party oh yeah good point yeah hmm. but I have been like literally as soon as uh, Avernus finished I just picked up the next book and uh, started reading <laughs> yep <laughs> Sounds, that sounds slightly familiar. Yeah. Like whilst we're all like decompressing afterwards and just chatting. It was like, all right, next book. <laughs> I've got the the benefit of being one of a pair in our home game where uh, there's me and another DM that kind of switch on and off. Mm -hmm. um, so when they're like in the final chapters of their game, he lets yep. me know and then I'm prepping for the next game before yeah. the, uh, the the new one finishes. So Yeah, we're pretty fortunate in my friend group in that we've got three of us that all DM. Um, and we're playing Cyberpunk and D and D at the same time, and kind of just mm. alternating week by week, so no one gets sort of burnt out. I think in our in our home game, we've got everybody's kind of burnt out on Forgotten Realms, um, but I really wanted to run Tyranny of Dragons, so I am flavoring a Tyranny of Dragons game, but I'm I'm setting it in Eberron instead nice. of. Uh, instead of Forgotten Realms, which has come with some problems, but is also super fun to just reskin an entire game for funsies. Yeah, Steve's a big fan of Eberron. Yes, I am. I am also a big fan of Eberron. Have you um, had a chance yet, Steve, to unpack some of the stuff that you bought? Uh, I yeah, me and the kids unpacked all of the uh, Marvel Heroes Champions card game. And uh, how much alien so, stuff did you buy? I bought the um, Colonial Marines expansion book, and I bought Destroyer of Worlds uh, campaign. That isn't opened yet. I was thinking more about the uh, the dragon. The the dragon is known that is set on top of. Uh, the stream minis waiting it, for an opportunity to, to paint. Is that like an, an Eberron dragon, or is that just you're going to put it into anything? It it's um it's not an Eberron dragon because strangely mm. enough, in Eberron you don't get dragons per se because. Um, but the, but this is the per se bit I was I was on about. Because <laughs> <laughs> dragons are. Um, Part of the lore is that the world was created by two dragons, and that's where carbon crystals come from and stuff like that. So, isn't it are. three dragons, right? Three, yeah, yeah, and that's the different colours of the carbon you get. Yeah. So that's that's why I'm kind of uh, excited about doing the reskinning of Tyranny of Dragons in Eberron because dragons really aren't a thing so much i mean they are in lore but it's not like in forgotten realms where like you see a dragon and like at least one of the once in every 
uh, Forgotten Realms book, you get a dragon somewhere. Mm-hmm. Uh, so it's like, what what better way to put urgency into the campaign than there's a dragon, guys. Mm. <laughs> they don't belong here, but they're here. That's a really cool thing. Yeah, you, you see a dragon, that means this is this is world changing. It's not yeah. just a, 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 yeah, a treasure run. Mm-hmm. But I, when we played our Eberron campaign, which was which was homebrew, I um, I did put a dragon in, but it was a clockwork dragon. Hmm. I mean, it's actually a Pathfinder beast. Yeah. And uh, on uh, at the con over the weekend, I managed to find the uh, mini version of that. Oh, I've seen Pathfinder. that mini. It looks really good. Yeah. It is a pain in the butt to paint. <laughs> Just that, saying. <laughs> is it because of the the cogs? The amount of textures you've got with the. It's uh, all the of scales. the textures, yeah, the textures and whatnot. Um, I also, the person that I was painting it for was like, I want it accurate to the Pathfinder version, mm. and I was like having to mess around with getting all the colors put together and getting the correct textures on the wings and stuff. It turned out to be a super cool mini when it was done, but I would I would finish painting it and I'd be like, I'm not painting another dragon for months. I don't care what it is and I don't care what you need it for. Dragons are off limits. <laughs> but yeah, it is one of my proudest <laughs> minis that I've ever painted, strangely enough. Uh, did, did you ever it? Um, no, that was actually before I had my airbrush, so, um, although the, the first thing that I did airbrush after I did get one is, uh, my Tia Knot. Yeah. Um, because there was no way that I was painting a giant dragon without an airbrush. I'm not psychotic. Steve, how's your airbrush been? It, it's been fine. Uh, I've used it a lot to paint um, the terrain pieces I've got for Dungeons and Lasers. It's been really good for doing that um, and you know, you saw it on the Starfinder stream mm. uh, so hopefully it was it was good. It looked good. Uh, I thought it looked good. Much better than I could have done uh, with a brush. I did go and brush in a load of detail afterwards but getting the base colours on um, and just the, the sort of the natural shading effect that you can get. Yeah. It was definitely worth it. That's that's I think my favorite part about having an airbrush is the quickness that you can like prime and lay down base coats mm-hmm. and then just like the nice general like because that's what I did with my big TMI is like I had this huge body that I needed to paint red. Mm-hmm. And it's like my airbrush made it so it was a two-day project instead of like a week-long project. Mm. Mm. Yep, one hour down. Oh, you're got kidding a... me. Nope. We have 45 minutes to go. Cool. Gonna spend the next forty-five minutes trying to find one particular colour that I would want. Oh, I love that. <laughs> I love when you're just like, I just had this paint. I swear. Mm-hmm. So, Dave, there's my yeah. the bottom. Oh wow! Yeah. Yeah, that's picked up really nice. Uh huh. I think that gold looks really nice. Uh, Chav, D and Dice. Uh, I, I don't think I even saw D and Dice down there. I'm sure they were there. They, they were there. They were there. Just... Um, they didn't have a bigger stand as they did at Dragon Meat, and because they were next to Magic Madhouse, 
uh, even caught up in the crowds of Magic Madhouse who were extremely busy. Right. Yeah, Magic Madhouse was probably the, the there was no big brands. You know, Magic the Gathering themselves weren't there. You had Free League Publishing, were probably one of the biggest names, but um, you had um, Magic Madhouse and Zatu were probably the biggest retailers there. There was no big kind of brand publishers yeah or like you know Warhammer weren't there representing Dominion and stuff like that showing off their new releases there was nothing it was it was uh, a couple of big dealers and then the rest were small dealers or um, you know we were talking to loads of creators and got writers and artists so we were talking to a load of them we're hoping we'll, we'll get to the see best that. place to meet people like that. Yeah. That's, I think, how I met some of the, the most fondest people. The people that I think fond, fondest of. Yeah. It's just that people have the same interests in common. Yeah. So you have, um, you have plenty to talk about. Actually, the the DM that I I play with on Tuesday nights on the Games Tavern, um, Eric Mengi. I think he was also. You guys play had him Tim guest on here actually. Yep. Yeah, he's yeah. a good. Uh, he was a, he's a good friend of mine. I met him at a con. He he commissioned some miniatures from me and then hmm. never let me go. <laughs> <laughs> He commissioned some minis from me, and I gave them back. And he's like, "You want to play in some D and D?" Yes, <laughs> thanks. <laughs> right. I think I'm gonna start working on my smoke bombs. Just made a start on those. Um, so what I tend to do, I mean, really starting out is going to be a second. I guess that's a stretch from what I'm actually going to do. So I'm going to take this hard coat that I mentioned earlier, mm -hmm. um, which is really just a clear varnish um, by uh, Warhammer. I think um, I asked you guys to get one of the varnishes from Vallejo. And what I'm doing is just putting a really thin coat of that right on this, these clear bits here. And yeah. Essentially, for anybody who's following along, uh, what this is going to do is this. This is kind of like priming clear bits. It's putting just another base down for um, for our clear paint to stick to, um, because these clear bits aren't. Climbed, it's hard to get thin down paint to stick on them correctly. So any kind of clear varnish or anything like that uh, is going to go really well on top of these. We're just going to let that dry before we paint those up. Or I guess I, I am, since Dave is already doing this. <laughs> I'm going to give it a go. I think I'm gonna do some like acrid smoke. Um, so I think um are you using what are you using, Dave? I am Players. using uh what am I using? I am using a, basically a a Vallejo game ink. I'm using green um, and either red right on. or I might use a yellow. Whoops. I think I'm I'm going to mess around with this Citadel color, uh, which is yeah that. And then I'm going to be using uh, Way, Waywatcher, Waywatcher green, 
glaze from Citadel as well. Um, so these are basically like inks, but they are game paints. So what I'm doing, because I know on her, on the backs here, she's got, like, the smoke is turning black at the ends. Yeah. So what I'm doing is I'm putting a little bit of the ink on the bottom, and then I'm going to take a black wash, and I'm going to just hit the top, like, the tip of that, and then I'm going to let them kind of naturally blend together. So again, what I've done is I've taken the ink color, my uh, Citadel, the Citadel contrast, I'm gonna close all of my stuff so I don't knock anything over. So I've taken that ink color and I put that on the bottom and then I'm taking a wash, just a black wash, and I'm hitting the tips of that. So then when I take a clean brush and I just dab this mid piece, they're gonna kind of naturally mix together We'll get that nice little faded look there. And I'm just gonna do I'm gonna do a second round of that so I can get like a nice bright color. So again, taking my uh, orange. It's like orange contrast color. I'm gonna stick this on the bottom here. It doesn't have to look pretty because we're gonna paint the glove on top of this. And rinse the brush out. Again, I'm just taking some black wash on my paintbrush and I'm just gonna tap the top of this smoke effect, letting it just kind of naturally blend with the contrast color, and giving it a nice little fade. Voila. That's nice. It's come out really well, actually. It's almost like I do this every day. <laughs> Then I'm just gonna do the same thing for my green one. Uh, the green is probably gonna take a little bit more. Actually. And anybody who doesn't have any washes, if you guys are following along at home or whatever, um, you can just water down um, just your regular paints to get this kind of effect. All you're doing is using a thinner, uh, like a paint thinner to, uh, like a thinning medium to get this very clear, paint look. And so again, I've done that with the green. Keep breathing, Jack. Keep breathing. <laughs> Sorry, mate. Rain. 
At least we know Joe's alive. Yeah. <laughs> He's still with us. Just. Mm. Let's see if I can get some those buckles. I wonder if I can get those buckles on there. Have any of you seen the new trailer for June as well? No. Yes. Oh, mate, it looks so good. So it's funny because I'm not, um, my my partner says that I am excited for Dune by proxy. <laughs> because he's read the books and he mm -hmm. really enjoys them. Yeah. And I've, I've only heard him talk about them very lightly. And I've seen, like, uh, things about Dune. Mm-hmm. But when we saw the trailer, the first trailer drop, I was excited. I thought it looked very visually awesome. Um, he referred to it as like the fan trailer for anybody who's read the books and is familiar with the story. The first trailer they dropped was very much for those people. But this new one just made me more excited. <laughs> just because I'm not a fan, per se. Yeah. It, just looks, it looks very cool. You don't know what I'm excited for? Wheel of Time, guys. It's happening. Ooh, is it? It's happening. Cool. They dropped a, a Wheel of Time poster, I think, last week. Very exciting. Is it? And that's it? No other details? Just just the poster? Um. Well, so I've been following pretty closely the Wheel of Time stuff. They've had mm -hmm. a couple of trailers. They're not really trailers, but like previews of of characters um like audio snippets and whatnot but the 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 poster that they just dropped had a date on it mm -hmm. for november 2021 and it's got rosamund pike's character uh moraine standing like on an in an archway and i'm just so excited <laughs> i'm just so excited i don't care about anything else for the rest of the year Wheel of Time is finally getting its TV show. And that's all that matters. <laughs> that's, is that a series of books um, that the author never finished and his son's around, right? The conclusion. Um, sort of. Um, he, so Robert Jordan uh, started the series Yep. And yes, he was unable to finish the series. Um, his widow, uh, Harriet, uh, found a successor, like another person to write the last couple of books using Robert Jordan's notes right. to finish the story. Uh, but yeah. I'm super excited. <laughs> I don't even care. Uh, I've got to wait for my contrast stuff to uh, wait for everything to finish drying. It's a pain. Yes. Yes. I guess I could paint the ground. I could do that. I'm actually quite pleased with that. I think I've just, I've just, as gently as I can, I've put some uh, brass for the buckles. I don't mm -hmm. know if, if, if you can see that, but it's just picking up the light. It's just those reflecting. look really good. Yeah, I think those buckles turned out really nice. I actually completely forgot to do the buckles, so I will get right on that myself. I need, a, I need a medium.
Joe, I'm assuming you're a, a, a Dune, are you a Dune fan? I am, yeah. Read the books, love the original film. Yeah. Um, did you did you see that documentary about the Dune movie that never got made? Uh, yeah, it was by who's the director that I can't made remember. it? That French uh, Dar- is, French is it Darren Aronofsky? Possibly, I don't remember his name. I I know that he um, was going to cast his son as um, the main character, and that he put him through like a year's worth of martial arts training like intense martial arts training wow and, and it never got made <laughs> I was, I, it's, it's actually funny I, I think about that documentary every once in a while because there is um, I think H.R. Geiger one of my favorite artists um, mm-hmm. was tasked to do some of the art for that particular movie um and you see some of the influences that had on some of his work in in later uh yes. geiger movies which was which is super cool no i i think the the dune movie is going to be cool i'm very excited for it yeah Great. Um, I've already agreed that I'll only go see it with my mum. Because <laughs> uh, that's what you did with all the Star Wars as well when they all came out. And Lord of the Rings, etc. That's cool. Yeah. That's how I was with my, my dad with, uh, with Star Wars. It's whenever the new Star Wars movie would come out around Christmas. Mm-hmm. With these new ones, we'd uh, we'd go see that together. What my parents, Star Wars fans, never. <laughs> <laughs> I somehow managed to paint green on the back of my alchemist's arm. Oh wait, that's not that color. Okay, to add a little bit of extra pressure, we are about 20 minutes to the end. No! 20 minutes to finish your mini. Well, I haven't done arms. I started trying to do the green on one of the things. But, uh... I mean, I did, I did the potion bottles before I painted the gloves, because I knew that it would be easier to paint those before I had the gloves laid out. So, makes sense. So since you guys have started this this miniature journey, I, I gotta know. What has been your favorite miniature to paint since since you've kind of started this brush off journey? It being season three and all. Oh, I have two. I have my fire elemental, mainly because it looked amazing when it was finished, and I was uh, playing around with it. And then I think it was the one I did the tattoos on. Okay. So I used a. Uh, Use a sharpie to draw tattoos <laughs> on the mini, and it looks. I still haven't f- fully finished it, but it it looks amazing. Uh, I'd probably say the elementals as well, and that I've done all of them in an evening, and they all look really good. But I, after I painted the first four on the stream, I then painted the other four when literally after we finished the stream um i think the yeah what you, what you can do with them is really good mm-hmm. in a short amount of time so 
I I like the um, the little ones we did. We were doing for the eyes. The Funko Pop things. The Funko oh, Pop the things. the um. Oh, was it? Uh, no, they're called um, uh, small worlds. Small worlds. Yeah, that's it. That's yeah. it. Yeah. So there's there's a, a Paladin one with a sword and the shield. And I painted that up before we did the the stream with the eyes. Yeah. Um, uh, I I really enjoyed that. That's um, that's one of my favourite ones finished. Yeah. And uh, the the golem, the iron golem that we did for one of the other technicals. Um, really? But yeah, the elementals were, were really good. They, I enjoyed painting them. And the earth elemental out of that lot is my favourite. I think those the I the 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 can't talk. <laughs> um, I gotta say that the those elementals are really fun to paint for sure. <clears throat> In terms of stuff that's coming out later in the year, is there mm -hmm. anything you're looking forward to painting just for yourself? Rather, um, than, rather than a commission or you know, paid work? Honestly, um, ever since I've got my ever since I got the three D printers, um, I've been focusing a lot on um, stuff that other people have created, mm -hmm. um, supporting other artists. Um, with models that they shape and create. Yeah. Um, so I've been I've been purchasing a lot of models from online sites like STLs, like digital files to to print. Um, just because that's that's um, I like supporting individual artists. I still love the the WizKid stuff, but I also much more I, I enjoy being able to go into shops to look at that kind of stuff mm -hmm. and with with lockdown that's been quite hard so um i don't know i just i i kind of love the stuff that they've been throwing at us so far and did, just been kind of taking it taking it in stride did you yeah. know um so whiz kids made an announcement recently mm -hmm. that they're going to uh release their own um their own Are you talking about the, the sprue based ones? Sprue based, yes. Sprue based, yes. What are your what's your take uh, on that? Um I think it's gonna be interesting. Um I'm excited to annoy people with uh the way that I, I paint sprue <laughs> <laughs> sprue miniatures. Um you paint on the sprue. I don't paint them on the sprue, but I, I paint and assemble simultaneously. Uh, which yeah. makes a lot of my Warhammer friends cringe. <laughs> yeah, I I just paint everything in sub assembly. Um, I've got a friend that paints on the sprue, <laughs> and I'm just like I don't understand it. Um, I prime everything while it's on the sprues, and then as I assemble stuff, I will paint it as I go. Yeah, that's um. Uh... Not a lot of people appreciate that, apparently. <laughs> I, I have prime stuff because we have um, we get a load of dungeons and lasers from the Kickstarter, mm -hmm. and I uh, yeah to um, I found that at least pre-priming and then cutting off the sprues has been a lot more help. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think I I think it'll be interesting. Um, I will not be surprised if they do larger creatures like that. Um, I don't know if they'll try to conquer doing PCs more in that style. Hmm. Um, just because I, I would imagine it is 
like Games Workshop gets away with doing uh, characters on sprues because they are a little bit larger than your average miniature. Well, I say, are they going to be? Do they haven't said any more details. So, are they going to be like, uh, you know, like Warhammer? So here's your skeleton army. My you, my if, guess is going to be it's going it, to it it'll be big monsters. Yeah. Is that insider information there? Is that a, is that a slight tease? Uh, I mean, I don't work for WizKids, so <laughs> that is that is as a person who has painted yeah a bunch of different stuff from tons of different makers. Um, I can see where the benefit would be to going sprue based, especially with how popular Games Workshop has been with their sprue based miniatures. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you would call them miniatures, but they're figures, they're models, whatever. They it's are like, incredibly popular. They, um, they've done these kind of packs of six where they've got the kobolds or the orcs mm -hmm. as, as, a, as a pack and each mini is individual and, and they're pre-painted as well, which, which is great. But I, I, I would, you know, I would love to see them do something where you can get pre-built army on sprue and, and there you go there's your 12 you know 12 skeletons or whatever yeah like i, I know that games nice. workshop does that it's like here's a package there's 10 peats 10 guys yeah for you know your army or whatever um and i mean that makes sense because they've got a different like you know they've got different poses and and all of this this stuff um which i think is i mean it's great i think it's a great concept um, I I had a point. There was a point that I was coming to, and oh. now it's gone. <laughs> um, I would imagine that if if games worked, or I'm sorry, if if Wiz Kids was going in this direction, it's gonna be for yeah, like your your skeleton army maybe, mm. or um, la larger builds, um, stuff that is gonna be super intricate. Because if you think about it, um. Like, when I bought my Hydra, the only thing that came separate on the Hydra were the heads. Mm. And yeah. it was incredibly hard to paint. Yep. Because you've got to manipulate this thing in, like, a hundred different ways to attempt to get to parts and places that are super tiny or super hard to get to. And it's, it's not, it doesn't create the best miniature, I guess I could say. Mm. Um, it's not super clean. Um, it's very hard to get like clean lines on some of the parts of the Hydra. Whereas like if it did come sprue based and I could paint those pieces and then put them together to get a little bit more detail or however, I'm not opposed to that. Um, yeah, I think it could work. Um, I mean, there's some of the minis that they've got in the boxes. It you can tell that the arms have been put on before they've been put in the box. Even just, mm -hmm. even if it's not on sprue, but having the arms off and doing them yourself so you can paint behind them, and yeah, things like that would be a benefit. That's one of the reasons why I like when I when I am able to work on Warhammer stuff. It's one of the reasons why I like painting on like just stuff that has sprues and I can apply like their arms is because I always have. I have a tough time with painting stuff that's like super hard to get to. And you think about mm. it when you when you look at a Games Workshop Space Marine, for instance, if he's holding a gun in front of his chest, I can't paint the chest piece. Mm. And they've got those those chest those chest emblems, mm -hmm. and it's, they're super hard to get to. Or for instance, I have uh, the Sisters of Battle that like it's easy to paint their legs and then be able to put the tunic on because then I've gotten the underside of the tunic and the legs all painted before applying the tunic. Yep. Which, if that had come all together, I would have never been able to paint that. It wouldn't have happened. Um, it's, it's... As a painter, I feel like it would make things easier. To, like... Having stuff come in pieces is so is so nice. So I'm gonna I, I'll talk about for a second. For instance, this. So this miniature, miniature quotations, <laughs> this model. Um, as I was saying before uh, we went on screen, she came in pieces. All of these like 
this um, hmm. this plate right here and the back plate all came separate from this blue tunic. So I was able to paint underneath the tunic because, like for instance, you can see right here in this little it's gap in his armor, yeah. you can see her undercoat. Now, if this had come all in one piece, it would have been incredibly hard to paint that little that little blue peeking out. And that might not be a big deal for a lot of people, but for a perfectionist like me, that would have bugged me forever. Yeah. yeah. But because this breastplate came separately, I was able to paint it in super detail and then apply it. And the same thing goes with all of like these leg pieces and whatnot. The legs came separate from the hips, which came separate from the coat. I was able to paint all of these little tiny pieces that now go together to make a nice cohesive model and because this is such a large model that works yeah so over here before i drop her that would be catastrophic <laughs> sorry mom been working on your project but then my wife dropped it on the floor and broke it all into pieces <laughs> uh hello twitching twitchy says uh hi guys happy to see some painting going on uh dave have you got enough paint uh, have you got enough to paint after the weekend <laughs> have i got enough to got enough as in to have you picked up a load of models that you have to paint now oh no um did i buy any i got i got some board games which have miniatures but i, I wasn't planning on painting them um what <laughs> because because i got a lot of stuff <laughs> I have a lot of miniatures to paint. I know. Preach to the choir here, buddy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. Um, I've got a cupboard full. <laughs> yeah. You, you can see all of my packaged minis uh. here, but you can't see the stack of Warhammer I have over <laughs> here. And all the resin printed miniatures I have over here. I keep printing more stuff, even though I haven't painted the stuff I own. I hate to tell you, Dave, but this is the life right here. <laughs> I bought Clockwork Dragon um, some gazers to go with my beholders. A fountain. That uh, fountain was really nice, actually. The fountain was really nice. And there was something else I bought as well. I can't remember what <laughs> No, I got um. It was a couple of couple of board games. Uh, most of the stuff I bought this weekend was Magic: The Gathering, D and D, Forgotten Realms cards. I kind of got the bug for that. Uh oh. So. Did you get the you got the paper bug? Yep. <laughs> yep. Yep. Can't play the damn thing, but. There's, there's some really nice artwork on them. Sorry, guys. Dave has come down with a terrible case of the paper bug. <laughs> we'll now use all of his buns to buy paper. <laughs> it, it sucks you in because they put these little foil stickers in the corner and don't tell you what it's for. And then they, they, they have the audacity to tell you that it's card number 20 of 21 <laughs> gotta get them all yeah I am super happy with that actually probably should have some done something other than green smoke with my green alchemist no I went I went red and green I think the pet it seems to have turned out quite well. It's too uh, early for that. I haven't that... painted his arms yet, or her arms yet. So I'll probably come back and do that at a later point. I don't think I have time now. It's like just enough time to dabble on some, some dry brush and details.
Clearly performing magic, making her arms disappear, and that's why I haven't painted them. Seems to do it. You've convinced me. I'm actually really pleased with that. Really good, Dave. Mm. Do you like that? Mm. <clears throat> and we are two minutes, but I am two call minutes. I am calling mine done. Yeah. Yeah, I'm going to do the arms another day. Oh, I really like how that dry brushing came out. Oh, yeah. I, I haven't dry brushed mine yet, but um, I'll definitely I, do that. I snuck that mine nice. in real quick. <laughs> <laughs> still haven't done quite like the tops of the boots and whatnot but i think there is a there is a i didn't do it but there was a slight leather strap on a buckle but yeah i did yeah, done the buckle but i didn't do the strap on it and then i dry brush over the top of it so you can't really see it oh Obviously. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Baron. They don't, they don't call me the pro painter for nothing. Sorry. <laughs> really like how your smoke came out, Dave. It's pretty cool. Yeah, I, I just literally just did it the same. The green is much better than the red. I think maybe I should have done the yellow, but... 
Uh, I yeah, use I think the I'm gonna, varnish I'm gonna... really works. Yeah. Because the varnish on the glass, I'm... look, it's just picking up the light on the green bottle. Yeah, it looks real cool. Joe, what did you use for your, your smoke there? I like that bright green. Uh, I used, there's a Vallejo Illuminous Green li Livery, Livery Green. Yeah. All right. Uh, and then I went over the top of that with uh, Tesseract Glow. Ooh. Okay. Zero. Right okay. on. I also added a little tuft as well. I'm just going to focus on it. Not tuft of grass. I only got these the other day. I love those. They're <laughs> they're my favorite. I will. I put tufts on gra tufts of grass on like everything now. <laughs> yeah, and for Baron, that's where you, the texture base. You can see it's kind of got a grainy, muddy sort of ness on it. Is that does is that the, the that's not the base that came with it, right? Those like real flat ones or. No. No, I put on a bigger base. I was gonna say, does it, it looks like it's on one of the? It looks like it's on a Warhammer base. It is, yeah. Okay, <laughs> that makes sense. <laughs> I put on a bigger base because I wanted to um, put some texture on it, and I wanted to put. A, I knew I wanted to put a, a tuft on it, so. Right on, right on. It needed a bit more space. I it's... love those tufts. They're so much fun. I've, uh, obviously, muddied his boots up a bit as well. Steve, your time is up. <laughs> he's, he's still on mute, he's probably talking away, going, oh, come on, just going to finish this one off. Come on, carry on talking. <laughs> you get, you get penalised now for being a minute over and you haven't put your, your brushes down. <laughs> like doing your exam, still answering ben, questions when they come around getting papers. Ben, the bit that I just did, because all my wash is wet when I'm trying to paint over it. That's... Oh. Is this the equivalent of your cake sliding off? Yeah. Oh gosh. <laughs> I think I that that, that green layer, that the green, um, like the outfit on the bottom, that mm -hmm. that stands out really, really well. Yeah, I I really liked. As I thought about doing the all brown, but I was like, I just couldn't put my heart into it. Hmm. So I wanted to. So I took a real dark brown with some intermediate green. And mix those up to make this kind of like ever everesty green. I'm yeah. really proud of that. I am a little bit bummed that I did a green bottle. I think I should have probably done like a blue smoke or something like that. Would have been nice, yeah. Against it. Yeah, the the green is too much. I think. I, really I think like that I think mine mine is more D and D and yours is more Pathfinder. Yours is more sort of dark and gritty. Mine, mine's a happy, I, <laughs> happy. I feel I feel like I feel like maybe my my alchemist stepped out of a bog, <laughs> <laughs> and yours just came out of a shop. Yeah. Look, I've just got new new. Look at my new outfit. There your your alchemist is the kid that gets that's found like level one. Yeah. Mine yeah. is. I'm, I'm gonna go adventuring, and then yeah. that's like twelve <laughs> levels of adventuring. Yeah, yep. this is like like twelve levels later. Yeah. <laughs> Thousand yards stare and <laughs> pre prime bombs ready to go. Yeah, yeah. Yep. <laughs> Steve, I, like, I, like I want to see yours. Dang it! All right, let's let's try and get this camera to work. Well, and Joe also bring yours up again. Do the do the spin cycle. Try and get them as big as you can on the camera. Mm, let me turn it over here so I can see what. And then later, although we're not we're not doing the gold stars as such anymore, uh, let's do it anyway just to see who might win. Yeah, heck yeah. Right. Although that is a lovely shade of blue Ooh. for Joe. Mhm. Mm Oh, Steve's done the, the black smoke. That looks nice, actually. Yeah, I like that. I like the white. 
so it was too it was too wet to dry brush. But I, I did try to dry brush and then made a complete hash of it. Um, so mm. as well as repainting head. So I I didn't go with the um, what the inks on the transparent bit. Mm. If you're no opaque. If you're watching this in live chat, you can you can vote for who you think is best. Uh, as I said, we're not doing gold stars on, unless I win. Yeah. But uh, we'll, we'll we'll see what happens. I think I think Steve has got my favorite this time. Ooh. I really I really like how that white pops. Mhm. Mm Thank you. I, I didn't know how to muddy up the bottom. I wanted to to do mm -hmm. what you did, but just run out of time because I washed it and it was still wet. <laughs> yeah. I think Joe, like Joe, one those, like... Joe's one looks looks nice as well because it looks like it's like a mm -hmm. like grey clay mud, and it's just been yeah. walked into the outfit, especially with the back of the outfit. If you spin around, Joe, you know, just just mm -hmm. mud. Yeah, that is that is good at the top. Steve's got my win though because he finished his arms. <laughs> <laughs> I finished my arms. <laughs> <laughs> Joe spent too much time on that base. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it, uh, he's base practicing. <laughs> to be honest with you, I tried to paint the smoke bit and it didn't go right. And I was like, oh, I'm going to do this later. <laughs> <laughs> you know, when you get like, um, put off doing it because it didn't go how you wanted it. <laughs> so, Steve, how did you do your black smoke? Is that a black wash or no, is that paint? No, I, um, I wet blended. Uh, lots of different greens you can see from my palette. So I wet blended dark green, light green, mix the paint together, then did a stone grey uh, and wolf grey, blended those together and just went darker as it went to the top. Uh, and right. then I just threw the black wash on at the end. Uh, and then I was going to go back over it and uh, dry brush it with, with white to pick out some of the highlights. Hmm. The, the green I'm more pleased with. I ended up spreading the wash all over the place. Um, the if, red is less contrasty. It did have yellow and orange in it as well. But if you move your palette down a bit, yep. oh, no, the palette, the wet palette. Put me hand behind. No, your your wet palette. I he wanted to see more of the wet palette because you're zoomed in so far though. So I you're only you're see framed like in. A tiny so what? Bit. Yeah, what you see in zoom, we don't see. Okay, so yeah, there's there's the greens that I ended up blending. Yeah. Together, wet blending to do the bottle. Uh, I did the red and yellow. Yeah. So I did the two well, reds well, and yellows. Well, 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 can't see the reds Zoom and yellows. <laughs> yes. uh, move, move your palette upwards. Yeah. Um, there you go. That's yeah. it. Oh, I'll yeah. do that. Yeah. So yeah, I, I blended the, the two reds together. Uh, put some yellow into to wet blend to orange, and then put some yellow further up, uh, and then blended these greys further up. It went. Um, I think I did the grey on, on the red because it's a lot smaller than the green. Uh, and then, yeah, it's just through the black wash over the top. But when I tried to then um, dry brush it because the wash was still wet, it then just went one massive grey across. So, mm -hmm. it's, uh, it, yeah, it, it wasn't as good as I, I wanted it to be and it wasn't as good as I did it the first time. Uh, but the green, the green I'm pleased with, uh, the red went a bit over the top with the grey. So I'm going to have to go back over and do that. I think it looks real great. Cool. Steve, well done. You get the artist vote. Thank you. And we, right, if everyone switches back to their face cams. I've got to remember how to do that. Hold on. Oh, uh, where's my mouse? Boom. I have my mouse upside down. It really confused me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, crap. I actually have to so, click back into Zoom so I can see everyone. <laughs> thank you once again to Leia for joining us there. Um, Thank that's you for a having lot of me fun. again. That's all right. We'll be doing more. We'll be doing more. Um, three for three. Yeah. Had me on all three seasons. seasons. That's, that's this, cool. has been, this has been really fun. I really enjoyed this. Yeah. We don't know what's going to happen next. We might be doing... Um, we don't know. We don't know if we're going to be doing seasons after season three finishes. We might just do... You know, what, what are we, we going to paint? We'll just do some hangouts and find out what we want to do. Um, but these, if anyone, if you're interested in, these are the Deep Cuts uh, WizKids range. This was the Female Human Alchemist. These are the Pathfinder Battles, uh, Wave 15, 
and they are out now. So all of your local gaming stores should have them. If not, go to WizKids. Um, they sell them directly as well. Um, as well as they, if you're, if you're in the States, they have a, a, a location, a shop finder. It doesn't work in the UK, because uh, I tried. But um, yeah, so check those out, and you can find all of them in your local game store. Fantastic range. You've seen some of the images on our on the screen as well. That's just a sneak peek, a pe sneak mm. peek at some of the stuff that's coming out, and uh, we'll be doing more. For the next two more weeks, we'll be doing this on every Monday. Then we'll take a little break. Then we've got some more Mondays. Then we'll take a little break. We've got some more Mondays. So we're spreading mm -hmm. season three out a little bit more. And more than we normally would. Again, learning from our mistakes in the past, trying to make it easier for us all, so we got plenty of break time in between. Because we're doing a lot. I am. I am. <laughs> we've just done a weekend at convention, and I am streaming, or at least in meetings, for the next eight evenings. So we have a lot nice. of stuff coming this way soon. It sounded like my last week. <laughs> <laughs> it's like I had like D and D every day. Like I had a, a game I had to DM on Monday. Oh, I streamed game on Tuesday, painting on Wednesday, and a D and D game Thursday and Friday. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We we've the got came we've got that. Just like, it okay. is it is a lot of fun. All of it is a lot of fun, which is, which is really nice to really nice to have. But um, <laughs> again, Leia, thank you very much for joining us. Um, yeah, thank you, thank you, thank you for watching us. And if you like it, make a note in the comments. Oh, we did mention if you've got a... What was the discount, Steve? It's 10% uh, code with badges at uh, Layers Etsy store. Um, it has been popping up during the stream, but I will yes. do it manually now. So you have it. So yep. please go and check out... Uh, oh, crap. Uh, please go and check out the Etsy store. There is loads of stuff on there. Um, dice bags, chainmail stuff is awesome. Uh, you yep. can also see get a custom painted mini and uh somebody was talking before the stream started about um custom painted minis and, and going for Ooh, what's that? the option of the the play one and the the, the bigger one be like for a diorama or for, for a uh oh yeah we were talking about or... hero forge mini Ooh, i almost dropped it <laughs> hero forge <laughs> minis i'm gonna actually be doing the painting some of those on wednesday so that's gonna be super exciting we should try and do a I just for we should try and do a chain mail. We needed like a beginner's chain mail kit. Oh, do right? I and then have... how do we how do we make it? How do we do it? <laughs> these are these are actually these are super this style right here is super easy to do. It's like a loom band but just with mail. <laughs> what? <laughs> is it like a loom band? <laughs> yeah. Joe will know what they are because he's got kids, so that's yeah. why. Not, not exactly. <laughs> Tons of little elastic bands all over the house, basically. Totally. <laughs> yep. That's exactly it's actually just like aluminum pieces of metal all the time. <laughs> um but yeah, so I've got earrings like this on my website, uh or on my, my Etsy. I also have miniatures as well as um chain mail and all that fun stuff yeah, mm -hmm. yeah that, there's some awesome stuff on there and, and custom painting as well yes yes i do do custom custom painting stuff which is what i live off of right now <laughs> i just thought that that should be a, you should do that as a kickstarter is literally a chain mail starter pack as a kickstarter just like a um, range well, of well, chain mail I stuff I don't. I don't make my chainmail. I I buy the chain from a, a distributor and then I I make stuff. That's okay. They you, have you, beginner you... chainmail sets. Oh, do they? Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, they do actually. <laughs> Take that, paint them, and <laughs> do something different. With them. Yeah, totally. I'll get yeah. right on it. <laughs> Let's do that. Right. Then. Right. Uh, I need to get some sleep. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Cheers, everybody. Dinner. <laughs> right. See you all. Have fun. See you all next time. Bye-bye.